Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Ideas at Scale. This is our fifth episode. We are moving ahead, and today's guest is Russ. Russ is a founder of Kuko.io, uh, and Russ, uh, uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna. Let the floor open to you. Why don't you introduce yourself to us and our audience? Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, man. And thanks uh, for having me today. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, actually, currently I'm working in uh, Quokka.io. Quokka is uh, the cutest animal ever. Um, so, yeah, but so far I'm marketer in marketing uh, for almost, I believe, eight years or so. And yeah, yeah, something like this. Uh, I'm also a mentor at uh, Google Launchpad. Um, I was running a mentor week session with Startup Grind, with uh, Techstars, um, you know, what else? Brand Ambassador at Branch, uh, Branch Metrics. So here I am. Great. So Russ, uh, our uh, audience is largely really early stage uh, entrepreneurs um, and digital agency owner and your background in marketing, are you really going to like juice out a lot of knowledge from that today? Uh, the first question normally is the, directed towards the idea and how did you make from idea to a product, right? So our first question is, uh, what was your first idea when you decided you know, to turn into an entrepreneur and you know, with a mm -hmm. very different lifestyle than you know, what you could have as a normal job, you know, someone who does a job? So what was that first idea when you said, hey, I want to turn into an entrepreneur. I want to pick up and solve a problem. <laughs> yeah, it was a funny story, to be honest. Uh, when I was 15, I worked at the surf shop. Uh -huh. And one day I did a really huge sale, you know, and the equipment for surf and kite surf is a little bit pricey. Mm -hmm. uh, but, that, uh, but at the end of that month, uh, I got only additional like 100 bucks to my salary or so. And this is actually how I decided uh, I need to open my own shop uh, just to get all my, all my money. <laughs> and I asked my friend uh, who was uh, in coding for a year or so to help me with this. Uh, he built an online shop uh, for us and it's how we were starting actually. We didn't have money to make a direct order from manufacturers. Uh, so I came to uh, almost all shops in my country and not only in my country and ask them to run some kind of drop shipment. And to be honest, back to the days, uh, I even didn't give a shit it was calling dropship model. Uh, so my offer uh, was super simple. I just told them like, uh, okay, I'm going to publish all your items, all your stuff uh, online on my uh, own shop. And once someone ordered it, I would buy this, that, product, that product. And we started actually, and it was growing pretty good. So we even opened a few services around this company in the same field, uh, from something super simple and up to building quadrocopters before even DJI was founded. Um, so yeah, but as age uh, 18, uh, I was so tired from all this stuff and I sold that company to competitors from, from some Mickey Mouse money. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was my first product after all. Great. Now you have a unique distinction, uh, Russ, that you are a marketer turned uh, into a tech startup founder. Uh, how did you go about harnessing your uh, experience that would actually help you become a tech founder? I, I mean, I come from a non-tech background as well, and it took me a while to get used to, you know, how tech companies are run. What kind of processes are there? How do you hire all? How did you go about it? I think a lot of uh, people from non-tech uh, background have this, you know, like always have this question whether they will be able to do it or not. So how did you solve that for yourself? You know, to be honest, it's uh, not something real huge. I mean, uh, if you came from a non-tech field, um, you just... I believe you just need some, uh, you know, like desire to change the world or you need to find that point um, somewhere uh, how you can improve uh, some process, for example. Um, so I always love marketing. I love to help uh, people find the right solution to their pains. And at the same time, when you are an entrepreneur in tech industry, you have a lot of fails. And after I sold my first company, I was like, okay, 
I am 18 and I just did it. The role is mine, you know. <laughs> then I failed. I failed three times in a row. I spent all my money on products with different problems. Some of them didn't get product fits. Um, the rest of them didn't get market fit, etc. And it's like a first uh, lesson I learned. You need to move fast. And it's like the biggest, you know, like the biggest problem maybe in tech industry. You need to move as fast as possible. So, um Marketing helps me to test and validate, validate my ideas uh, faster. And to be honest, it's uh, the second lesson I learned, uh, find your passion. Because if I figure out that being CEO or VP of marketing is not my path, exactly, for now at least. And I love to do marketing by my hands. And it's why I wake up every single day, actually. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you did, but are you happy? Did you accomplish your goals and it's make you happy or not? It's, it's something like this. Yeah. So, so just to summarize it, you, it's more like if you, if you know your passion, if you know your love and you have a will, you'll figure out how it has to be done, right? Something like that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And it's exactly the same stuff with even non-technical uh, projects. Because it, again, if you, if you would like to open, I know, small cozy shop somewhere in the city, do it. If it's, if it's real what you want to build, just do it. Perfect. That's, that's such a great answer. I think I also agree to that. Now, so, okay, so you had an idea, you made a product. The next question is, can you tell something about the first sales that you ever made? Uh, and now when you look back, when you look back so long, you started really early when you were 18. Uh, how would you have done it differently? Or would you at all do it differently? Like, you know, with all the wealth of knowledge that you have now. So your first sale, how did that happen? And would you like to change it at all? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think if you turn around right now and you have no clue what you can do in a better way than before, it means you didn't grow maybe as an expert or marketer or sales or whatever. Uh, so my first uh, sales was super ugly. I mean, I just did everything that I, can, that I can to get first money. I leave a lot of comments in forums, groups and social media, uh, etc. Now we can call it guerrilla marketing, but let's face the truth, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, now, for example, when I'm trying or when I'm launching new product, uh, it's um, like step-by-step -step stuff I do all the time. I'm going to beta list, I'm going to product hunt, factor news, and start out to get first clients. And I'm too lazy, so I love marketing sales automation. <laughs> and I'm always trying to build the growth machine which can work on after pilot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I, I said big time during my first sales as well. I thought that I'll never do say, uh, I'll never do a pitch again in life, but here I am, I'm doing again and again. Now before, so I think um, uh, Russ, the, um, since I, I've also spent a lot of time in marketing, what I've seen is, you know, you can make a lot of products, but until you find a perfect channel fit, you know, it's not just product market, but it's product market and channel fit. How do you normally go about finding that for your product? Because you have all, all three, you know, you've figured it out a few times. How do you go about finding your product market and a channel fit? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome question, but um, you know, uh, I'm always building companies like for myself. I have some pain, for example. It's uh, how I came up with the, uh, with the idea of Quokka. Yeah, because I did it manually uh, on my previous job, got like 77% open rate. And I was like, wow, crap. I, I spent like uh, a few hours and I get I saw, oh, some, some amazing result. Okay, we need to build a product. <laughs> so um, I'm not a huge fan on, of customer development approach when you're don't give a shit about industry and you're just trying to speak with someone, with another person, with another to find some pain and then try to solve it. I think you need to have like to my knowledge in the industry. And quite actually it's an amazing question because of, uh, from the uh, first time when I kind of like had like zero budget marketing, I came to paid uh, ads and it works when you have some common business model, like I know, an online shop, for example. But when you're building startup, you have like 1,000 ways to spend that money in a more effective way. And I really like that you mentioned it because of uh, I read an uh, article by Brian Balfour exactly about product and channel uh, fit. And uh, I'm 
maybe in line with him on 1000 person because yeah if you have like for example you're tr trying to charge nine dollars per month i don't think that uh facebook pay-per-click advertising will work for you yeah it's it's the point when you need to find another channels uh cheaper uh, i know maybe peripheral marketing or so content marketing or something like this and again if you for example if you're working in the enterprise um level yeah and you're trying to um, sell people and to get i know five hundred thousands uh, per year definitely you need to work with uh, a lot of uh, a bunch of channels different channels so fun like this okay and, and do you have any framework i know you've shared with us is it uh, do you have any framework that you normally follow and that our users can you know our community can also use in terms of finding this fit for you should i share the slide that that we had yeah yeah go ahead i'll just just give me one second maybe mm -hmm. yeah actually uh yeah that's this is uh yeah i have two of them uh one uh, one of them is about um like product startup company yeah uh, so first one is about business. And I, I spoke with Alan Grant, uh, who is a founder at uh, Hire It and Talkable. And he mentioned one thing like, first you get the people, then you get the direction, and then you get the money. Uh, it means that you need to find the right people before you're thinking to run a startup because it's super critical for you as an early stage company. And it's what I, I understand, understood um, not so far um, not so, much, not so much time ago, yeah, because uh, it's real super hard. When you're working, for example, on, I know, on any full-time job from nine to five, uh, super, you have like almost zero risk uh, and it doesn't work in startup. So it's super critical again. Um, traction is something that depends on your product. If you can do sales without product, don't even hire the developers. It can literally kill you. I'm dead seriously. Uh, sometimes, of course, you're working on complex software, you know, and I would suggest to sell it uh, maybe as an outsource. Just reach companies of people who might be interested in solving this problem and tell them um, you can build something amazing for them, but charge them upfront. It's, it, again, it's super important because uh, it's like... Um, what I'm doing every time. Uh, for my first company, I spent like five or six months to build a product. For my next one, I spent like three months. For the next one, I spent one month. Uh, and I believe for, for the future one, I will spend, I don't know, maybe one week or one day <laughs> just, to, just to validate the idea. Uh, in all other cases, try to avoid building something and try to do maybe manual MVP, meaning if you can do something uh, by your hands and take money, do it. Don't build another product and yeah, don't, don't wait to some luck, maybe. Uh, another model I have is about launching your product. There are several channels of uh, clients or users which are super awesome for the first day of your company life. It's like the common problem. Um, for everyone like yeah i spent some money to build a product to hire developers uh, to do to do x y z uh, and now i don't have money for marketing well what what should i do uh, i need to i know get an investment or something like this it sucks because of uh you can get uh, your first clients almost for free because uh, in marketing you have one super simple rule you can um, pay by your time or by your money yeah, and in case you don't have a lot of time, a lot of money, obviously, uh, your option is to spend some uh, time. And uh, what I usually do, it's um, running customer development process. Uh, you can find like 40, 50 people who will get uh, to the last stage of this process with you, meaning you, you're trying to validate the problems and you run some UX, uh, UX uh, interview to test your solution, yeah? And then you are trying to charge them money. So it's like first 40 customers, for example. Then you can publish a product on better list. Depends again on product, you can get uh, something from 50 sign up up to 500 sign ups uh, in average. Uh, then you can go to product hunt. Uh, again, uh, for example, we got, uh, 
in Quokka, we did two launches on Product Hunt and we got almost uh, 1,500 signups and a lot of, a lot of customers. So then you can go to Quora and answer all related questions. Then you go to Reddit, Facebook groups and contribute to the community. And then you can write, run outreach system with LinkedIn, with, for example, using Duck Soap uh, to automate this. Uh, you can run partnership deals with other companies and services. Uh, you can go ahead with content marketing and content promotion. You can jump to AppSumo or SaaS Mantra if you find it's a good idea for you. And only then you can just try to scale it with uh, pay-per-click advertising, for example. I bet you will get much more than 100 customers for less than a few months if you if you do if you do this. Uh -huh. Okay, so just to summarize again, so I think don't wait too long to uh, go to market. Even if you have a you know half decent product, go and figure out, validate, take money from people, right? And the second thing probably is to go where people are, like go initial maybe. Beta list is a good place where you have our product hunt where you have good uh, number of product enthusiasts who are ready to test your product as well. And only when you have, you know, figured out all of that, that you will go and monetize at scale. Uh, right. This is what you meant. Right. So Russ, yeah. I have another question now, like a lot of people want to go to product hunt, even we do want to launch it. I haven't been able to do as yet, but so I just wanted like, how has your experience been with product hunt? What would you recommend there? You know, going to beta list, what kind of beta list, what kind of user you get there? You know, because I've, I've, we've been on beta list and we see like, these people are not really, uh, you're paying, you know, you won't be able to make money, but they'll test out a lot of your, you know, bugs and report yeah. that to you. Uh, product hunt maybe a little bit more. I just wanted to ask about the experience. How did you go about planning and how did it eventually turn out for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, so beta list, it's a kind of um, first step to validate your solution. Yeah, it's, uh, you are almost right. Uh, it's just about some kind of QA, yeah, and to find all bugs you might have at this stage. Uh, product Hunt is another story because of uh, it's about to validate your product actually because the Product Hunt uh, can drive your real users and real customers. But uh, yeah, the overall behavior of people uh, from these uh, you know, sources, it's not your ideal customer. Definitely, it's not your ideal customer, but um, just a first step, you know. And in case it's like it will cost you zero, uh, why, why not to do this? Why, why you should pay uh, some money to test your app or website? Why you need to pay some money to Facebook in case um, you don't know um, your conversion rate, for example. Uh, actually, it's uh, what I figure out by spending tons of uh, money on paid ads that it's super low ROI at the beginning. Because, of, for example, why the hell you're driving traffic to pages that don't convert, right? And it's I came up with a common idea. I should think, uh, you should um, do things which doesn't scale, first of all. And you should go, again, to Reddit, to Quora, to communities, and blah, 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 blah. Because uh, it will cost you almost zero. Mm -hmm. And drives for sales. Yeah, of course. Now, again, now one question for me is, you know, especially in SaaS business, what happens is the product sales and marketing is very tightly knit, right? They mm -hmm. work almost together. Uh, if your product on onboarding is not right, then probably the sales won't go up. If your marketing is, again, not targeting the right person, again, the sales won't go up. So for, in your startup, how do you handle that? You know, your product, your sales and your marketing team are tightly knit and they have one common mission. How do you go about doing that? It's it's a real super hard question because it really again it really depends on your product. Uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, marketing qualified leads and sales qualified leads. Yeah, uh, yeah. so we have a sales department, the role of marketing is to drive really good leads, and you need to figure out does it lead good enough. It's uh, why you're using analytics, uh, CRMs, lead nurturing, etc. And even after this, I would recommend to run personal retargeting or account based marketing and to build marketing funnels to support the sales process. It's super important because of um, obviously 
in startup you cannot uh, you know like do everything and you need to have laser focus on something uh, so i would strongly recommend to set up analytics uh, something even based like amplitude yeah and then find drop offs um, during all whole your funnel or you can use for example uh, some different frameworks like R, yeah, uh, acquisition, reten retention, referrals, revenue, uh, to figure out uh, where you need to, to focus right now and then work with, this, with that step. Great, now, now uh, Ras, again, you, you believe uh, in a lot of automation, right? Um, and automation uh, comes with it. Yeah, uh, and you've probably created a lot of different funnels, right? The question is more towards, you know, we, I, I've read a lot of funnels, uh, I mean, books on funnel, and every time I start, uh, or when I, whenever I started, it didn't work out, and I had to experiment a lot, right? Experiment a lot, improve, again, go, like, so the funnel, yeah. funnel is not built in a day, funnel takes long, it's just, in your case, like, what is the most common, you know, mistakes that, you know, a first timer, you know, someone who, who has a, you know, a product ready or almost ready, and he's trying to build his funnel. What are the mistakes that he should avoid? <laughs> you know, um, with funnels, there are two types of marketers. One of them just giving a direct call to action to call audience, and obviously their LTV is much lower than it might be. And others are trying to build super complicated funnels, and again, they get uh, super low ROI. The magic here is uh, to create exactly so many steps during your funnel as you need, and you can only real test it again and again and again. Because of, uh, try to start with direct uh, call to action. Doesn't work, add one more step. Yes, yeah, some kind of lead nurturing. Uh, doesn't work, add another step, repeat it again and again, and you get it right. So it's, it's a real problem. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's really like continuous pro project. You can do this uh, in one hour or even in one day or even in one year, because obviously your company is growing, you add new features, new solutions, and you need to like redesign your funnels uh, every time every time. Um, so you need to build a funnel, you need to collect data, figure out where and why people are stuck at some point and with marketing design and sales, uh, fix those problem. It's what I can call funnel actually. For example, I always build a map of uh, my website or app where, where I put all steps user need to do. Uh, from the left side of, um, it's like, you know, um, showing Facebook ads, going to landing page, going to sign up page and so on and so on. And <clears throat> from the left side of this map, I put all ideas why people are still on my app, but didn't perform uh, actions or didn't get to the next step. On the right side, I do the same for people who left my app. And then I think what's, uh, what is their behavior? Turn, like how can I turn these ideas into triggers and build marketing activities? And actually it works, but again, it's uh, as a huge fan of automation, I usually step like three, five, seven hundreds, two years to change flow uh, of my marketing uh, on the go. Great, I, I really like the answer. Like uh, something that I've also made a mistake is the first time I started, I made a, made a huge long funnel, right? I probably took a week and not just that, I, it took me another week to actually implement that funnel and test it out. Yeah. So, you know, now when I, I want, you know, I have uh, read stuff about people saying unlimited automation, I mean, unlimited uh, levels of automation, I actually want to like start really simple with some basic assumption, Yeah. find the bottlenecks in each of the step and actually target there. That bottleneck you got to solve, right? And your process yeah. is in that case for you is that you have a right side and a left side. The right side is towards people who have converted you would try to imagine what has probably went right for them. And on the left side, you have the people who didn't click or who didn't convert and what went wrong for them. And then reimagine yourself. That's how you yeah. do it. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, I, I love that. I'm going to use that, uh, Russ. Now, the next question is, you've, you've kind of helped like, what, 30, 40 odd uh, companies in, in doing their launches. Uh, how do you go about, you know, as a, as a freelancer, you know, because a lot of freelancing communities here, 
how do you go about deciding this is the project that I need to pick mm-hmm. up or this is something exciting for me? Yeah, exactly. The number is uh, like close to 40. Wow. And, you know, um, at the beginning, I take almost all products. But then I start looking for something very cool inside. It might be like a story behind the product or founders or the experience or the problem maybe they are trying to solve. And I wrote only one time with the product and didn't believe and it sucks. It really sucks. And after that time, I was uh, like, you know, angel investor because I'm trying to find a real value and like make a real hard die during this process i'm trying to know all details it's um yeah it's 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 real super hard because uh, i love products which have uh some, something real big behind them it can be pain story again some, something really big something that can uh, help me to believe in their success success and Russ, uh, for me, I've been a VC as well. What I, you know, um, be, my boss used to tell me that he really used to look out, look at the team, you know, how the team works together. Probably I didn't understand it then, but now I understand as a startup founder, what is the importance of team? So in your success or in your story, how important have been people around you? You know, how, how much would you say, you know, like had these people not been around me, I wouldn't have been, you know, what, wherever I am, you know, big, small, doesn't matter, but the stage that where you reached, how important and how do you go about, you know, like finding the right set of people for your startup? And it's like one billion person true. Because <laughs> uh, um, again, as a young company, uh, of course, obviously you can hire someone or find someone with a huge experience. But what is, what's more important is like, do you feel comfortable with these people? And it's um, it's actually what I'm looking exactly all the time. Because if in case I don't feel myself comfortable with this person, even if he is or she is amazing ex- uh, expert on some field, I know we can't work. We can't. Uh, we will not work together. Because uh, uh, you have a lot of you know like success. You had a lot of fails. And it's super important to have um, people like with strong emotional um, connections between each other in one uh, board. So yeah, people are super important. It's like, I, I, I even have nothing to add. And I think I'm, I'm very lucky in this case because of um, I'm working uh, like every time I'm working with my friends or people I know or people I have been working uh, for a couple of years before. And I believe it's like what really helps me to build a great, uh, great team. Because uh, right now, for example, when I came um, to my team and uh, told them literally that I don't want to be a CEO, it's not, it's, it doesn't work for me. Uh, man, magic happened. <laughs> I mean, really, um, our CTO takes like uh, all stuff around uh, technical problems. Our product takes all stuff around design and product development. And I, I literally can focus only on stuff I like the most. So it's, it's real super important. Great. Now, Russ, you've been also, you, you are a mentor at uh, Google Launchpad, at Branch. I've seen a lot of pro- projects happening around you, you know, some went really well some of course wouldn't have gone tell us one interesting story where you know probably let's say i'm going to leave the interesting part to you but it could be something that you felt wouldn't do well but actually it came out really well or somewhere where you felt that this wouldn't would do really great but it didn't go well at all Mm -hmm. uh yeah you know i can share actually a lot of details uh, yeah, but yeah, you know, you can talk about like there was a Tom and there was a Dick, you know, something like that. Yeah, uh, but, but with Google, I actually love all products uh, they selected to the program. Um, but the biggest thing I love like medical and biotechnology and marketing technology and voice startups. And I would think that um, maybe in the future, I will, run, I will run my own company in biotechnology or space field. It's like, my, you know, small dream. 
And you know, a lot of people was dreaming about being astronauts or solve problems with cancer. And I think it's a good idea to start your company in this field right now. And gosh, you have so many opportunities, so many uh, like huge companies uh, really want to support you. Uh, so yeah, it's it's what I love. I love people, you know, this this energy they're trying to solve these problems, they're trying to change some this industry and so on and so on. It's real awesome. It's real awesome. But uh, sorry, I, I can't share more details on it. Okay, no, no, no worries there, Ras. Uh, uh, another question is, you know, you come from growth side of startup, right? You've helped mm -hmm. people, and growth hacking has become, you know, uh, a word used too often, right? Uh, there's no uh, like definition of it, but you'll find a lot of growth hackers. So that is one part, you know, how do you, uh, in your organization, how do you develop the growth team, right? Is it something that the initial stages, the CEO should lead himself or the founder leads him himself, or he should actually look for someone from outside and get him into the, into the team to figure out the growth for him? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, it's it's about your passion. If you like uh, this, if you are, if you if you are thinking that uh, you will be the great marketer, uh, mm -hmm. do it. If you don't like it, hire someone. But uh, one important note: uh, in case you're a super early stage startup, obviously you as the founder need to do all sales and marketing and community building and support. Important, super important, top priority for all young startups <laughs> uh, but according to growth hacking you know it's just a framework it's like uh, agile for developer developers or scrum it has some pros and cons so i think you need to dive deep into it to understand all powers and weaknesses you can get so it's it's definitely not a silver bullet you know uh, especially right now, a lot of companies, uh, for example, think that growth hacking uh, growth hacking is a bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, like Intercom, for example, as I know, they don't like growth hacker growth hackers and everyone who call uh, himself growth hacker. <laughs> so I I believe you can be like I don't know maybe product marketer or growth marketer and growth hacking again. It's just a framework, just step by step guide you can use to achieve some results, or you can skip the steps. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And and let's say to to build this competency within your team, you know, is are there some books? Are there some people that you would recommend us to follow? I mean, I. I... I don't know because I'm reading a lot and I even sold my car to have an ability to read. <laughs> uh, maybe Trust Me, I'm Lying. It's uh, it's super cool book, especially, again, especially for young companies because of it, uh, it covers a lot of stuff around public relationships and how you can get uh, to the front page of TechCrunch, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, Lean Analytics, it's also pretty good uh, just to figure out uh, how you can, how you can uh, or how you should deal with uh, all analytics inside your product. Uh, all intercom books, all books by Bedez Marketers and Founders, all uh, books by UX Spin, mm -hmm. um, Hooked, yeah, it's also a great book, and Course in the Chasm. Course in the Chasm is super important, especially uh, if you're growing too fast and if you are, for example, somewhere on A or B stage right now, Crossing the Chasm is like top, top, top book you need to read right fucking now. Uh, so, yeah, I love also some kind of, you know, biographic books or about history. Sapiens, Sapiens is awesome, by the way. Yeah, that's, that's great. History is always great to love. Now, uh, another, again, this is a surprise question, Ras, is like, what kind of tools do you normally use, right? You know, in your funnel, can you tell us about that? If, if it's fine with you, what are the tools that you normally use? I know you use a lot, but apart from that, what do you use? <laughs> Man, it's, it's um, I mean, it's real huge. For example, from analytics side, I'm using Sigment, uh, Sigment mm. and Amplitude. Okay. Uh, from CRM part, obviously our, obviously. <laughs> uh, but again, it depends on uh, products. Uh, sometimes I'm using something like HubSpot. Mm -hmm. uh, not the best idea, but okay. Um, 
I'm using projects from growth hackers uh, to manage marketing team inside. I'm using like all the stuff, Facebook ads, blah, 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 obviously. I'm using Captain Growth. I'm using Quokka. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. We're going to uh, use that too. <laughs> really, it's, it's like 50 tools I'm using on a daily basis. And how do you manage all, you know, like, do you have one simple dashboard where you collect all of them or like... So it's like my dream. On? Huh? I'm going to pay a lot of money to that person who will develop one dashboard for all these tools. <laughs> well, well, we have a customer, Rommel, who's really good at, you know, using Zapier and different uh, Google Sheet and all those documents to create one dashboard. I think I'll connect yeah. with him. Yeah, yeah I'm, 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 using, I'm using the same, uh, like uh, Zapier, FTTT, uh, Optimate IO, um, like after pilot and so on and so on, but it really depends from your final, you know, because for example, uh, for in-app messaging, I'm using Intercom. Uh, mm -hmm. For some drip campaigns, some email sequences, I'm using um, drip, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, a lot <laughs> of them. Yeah, yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Okay. Now, again, la uh, I will, that's uh, almost my last question now is, uh, you know, you move across different, uh, of course, different stages of company, different projects. What keeps you inspired? Like, what makes you every morning, every, and you wake up, you know, what, what wakes you up every day? How do you keep your inspiration alive? Mm -hmm. You know, I follow a lot of people in the industry and trying to jump on call with them like every week. Uh, I love Behance and Growth Hackers to find something really new, something fresh. Uh, but it's like the third lesson I learned. You need to find inspiration inside yourself because of all stuff outside, like people, companies, money, cars. It's, you know, super and super unstable things. Uh, but when you came home and you're happy with uh, your, I don't know, growth, goals, progress, and so on, it's like a superpower and it's how you can move forward and change the world, actually. <laughs> At least your, your own world. So I believe the real inspiration is always about things in your head, in your minds, and yeah, so something like this. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's those are intangible that actually keeps you alive. Uh, Dipika, do you have any questions from audience? Can we ask uh, Russ about this question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So Bradley from Germany, he's asking about the use of black hat tactics in um, tech marketing. So what are your views on that? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, come on, I'm from Google. I can't answer on this question. I did it before. Yes, I, <laughs> I was using upvotes.club to buy some votes uh, on my post. It was a few years ago. Um, but, you know, it's quite interesting situation. Um, I faced uh, this problem with Product Hunt a lot of time because of, uh, you know, like two, three, four years ago when you got uh, first uh, place at Product Hunt, uh, you could expect like some attention, um, some emails from investors, media, you know, uh, VC and so on and so on. But now it doesn't work. Now it doesn't work. And the biggest stuff you can get from Product Hunt now, it's like there's a real feedback from real people. And it's actually why I'm not using any black hacks now. Because uh, when you're trying to hack Product Hunt, for example, and someone who finds maybe bug, maybe problem, or he or she didn't figure out some, I know, in your sign up process. And he or she came to your page and come, come to your page and see like that you are number one, you got like 2000 upvotes and everyone saying like, awesome product, amazing product, awesome company. Uh, this person like start thinking, okay, maybe I don't know something. Maybe I didn't figure out something. Uh, yeah, I, I will not uh, leave any comments. And like you lose, you lose the biggest value you can get from product hunt. So I would definitely not recommend to use any black hacks, but in case you would like to uh, read, trust me, I'm lying. 
<laughs> and you will find some ideas, definitely. Um, I have one more question. So Eugenia, she wants to know that uh, when you're uh, discuss, like, you know, you're a Google mentor. So when you're talking about, uh, you know, getting new projects or, you know, integrating with companies or, you know, co cooperations, how do you decide that? Like, is there a criteria? Mm, I, I'm not sure I really get it, uh, like, on 100%. Uh, maybe maybe uh, there no, is something. So as, a Google, as a Google Launchpad mentor, do you have a criteria or a checklist mm. uh, based you decide which companies okay. you want to talk to uh yeah you know um i'm just a mentor i'm not a part of uh like the google ecosystem in this way i um i mean i don't uh, participate in uh, company selection i don't have any criteria and i even can't like you know i cannot go to a head of mentors or someone from google and say to them hey I, I would like to see this company and I don't want to see this company. It's, uh, it doesn't work in this way, obviously. <laughs> uh, so it's just like, uh, for example, Google, someone from Google team can uh, tell me like, hey, we will have events in, I know, Parish, for example. Uh, we have these companies who is already selected uh, to the program. Would you like to uh, go there and help them with marketing? And it's like, my personal opinion, you know, I can say yes, definitely, I'm in, count me in, or, or I can reject, for example. Uh, but yeah, uh, as I mentioned before, for me, the main path, it's like uh, one of the top industries I love, uh, or um, the problem behind this uh, company. And it's like my personal criteria when I'm trying to select companies I would like to work with during uh, launchpad sessions. And uh, Rahul wants to know that uh, as a marketer, what do you suggest other marketers to follow or follow, read, and uh, you know, which are the best places or hubs for marketing or marketers to be? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, first of all, you can uh, ping me after this call. I will share my uh, spreadsheet with uh, some links. I believe we can share it with uh, everyone who's a part of our call today. Um, but um, what it can be, what it can be. I love um, a few articles, how to become a T-shaped marketer uh, by Buffer, uh, how to become a customer acquisition expert by Brian Balfour, and how to design your ideal marketing campaign. Uh, these three articles uh, have a lot of links inside, like uh, about everything, literally about everything. So it's, it can be a good start. Um, if you are, if you would like to um, find something new, it can be indie hackers, growth hackers, and um, um, growth.org. Uh, I also love uh, podcasts like Expert on the Wired, uh, Gary Weinerschuk, obviously, uh, Master of Scale, and something like this. It's yeah, it's like what I love. But you know, um, super tricky situation because of a super tricky situation. Uh, I believe that uh, all technical parts of marketing uh, you can do by your hands and it's not a like, you know, huge problem. Uh, the huge problem is marketers uh, should create, first of all, you know, and um, it's, it's real, it's real problem. Uh, we need to write text, stories, create pics, videos, record podcasts, and so on. We need to create before we're jumping to, jumping to tech side of this question. It's super hard. Uh, just an example, I'm always using one template for, for the first ad on Facebook. Again, I found it on a Buffer article, uh, 11 formulas on storytelling. I think something like this. And it's just like, hey, meet John. He's a software developer and gets a problem X. And he was uh, fired from his job. But then he figured out that blah, 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 and come up with the solution Y, which does it. You know, I paid like uh, from nine to 11 cents per click in US with this. And I'm talking about thousands of clicks. 
So storytelling is like the most important skill for marketers, but uh, don't try to trick people, use the real story of your clients. Wow, this is a great advice. At the end, it's all about story. You can use different, te- you know, text just helps you actually reach out to people. But if yeah. you don't have a great story to tell to people, they won't really buy into your story, right? Yeah, and it, it, you know, it's uh, super interesting because, for example, when you are doing all marketing step by step, when you uh, yeah. run some customer development process and figure out pain points, when you have a story to share, when you have a story, uh, you know, like, to show how uh, all other people can solve this problem. Uh, all technical uh, questions like how to set up pixels, for, how to start Facebook pixels on your site, it's like just regular problem and you can solve it, I know, for 15 minutes or for five bucks. It doesn't problem actually at all. Yeah, that's not really a differentiator, right? If, if you use a tool or if you use Facebook pixel, it, it doesn't really uh, give you an advantage or an edge. Right. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it doesn't give you value, and it doesn't give value for customers. Mm-hmm. Great, Russ. I think uh, we've just we've almost reached our fifty minutes. Okay, we just have one last question. There's a okay. college kid attending the webinar, and he wants to know how can college kids become growth hackers. So maybe oh. we can just take one. Uh, Again, uh, first of all, I would strongly recommend to follow the, uh, the, the three articles, how to become a T-shaped marketer and how to become a customer acquisition expert to start with. Uh, actually, if you have an ability, you can join the team uh, running by Dennis Yu, because of, uh, it's like the best Facebook uh, marketer ever and ever and ever. He spent over 1 billion on Facebook ads. So he knows literally everything. And um, as I know, he, he hire uh, college students uh, and teach them. And so, yeah, I, I believe it's a good idea. Uh, so, yeah, it's like uh, first steps uh, you, you, can, you can use right now. And um, I was talking with a uh, growth marketer from Clearbeat a few days ago. And actually, we were talking also about uh, like education, how you can find, you know, like new knowledge, how we can teach or grow, learn something. And <laughs> he answered uh, that at the beginning of his uh, career, uh, he took uh, like uh, every contract he can. He, he was working like 10, 12 hours per day just to, just to learn something new, just to run some experiments. And yeah, just to get some um, experience at this field. Great. Deepika, are you done? <laughs> okay, perfect. Rest, thank you so much. I, <clears throat> I had a, <clears throat> a few big takeaways. Storytelling is really important. Keep your funnel simple. Focus on data. Uh, don't wait for your product to be, you know, like, make a, don't make a massive product product and then go into the market. I completely agree. I've done that mistake as well. Um, so these are the big four lessons. I think everyone should, you know, I hope. And you don't. Yeah. But one more and uh, try to learn something new every fucking day because of uh, in case at the end of the day, you uh, don't have an answer um, to question like what I learned today from my clients, you will lose. Definitely. Perfect. That's, that's <laughs> amazing. So Big five learnings for me. Thank you, Russ. Uh, I'll keep in touch with you. Uh, we've added you to the group. Uh, we'll just request if anyone has any question, he'll probably, we'll ask you on the group to take your yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. Thank you again for having me and take care, man. Keep growing. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Russell. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.